have worked with Dr. Martin Luther King and Mrs. Rosa Parks, and I know really great people when I see them. I know really great people when I see them. Mayor Adam O'Neill is a great person. His mother Pam is back there. She's been with us all along. Uh, Yvonne DeRuz is one of the main organizers. The women in this movement are the powerhouses, and we give them great honor. And I want to introduce uh, Grace uh, Shemaine to talk to, uh, from the, de from the uh, Texas delegation, and also she was our nurse. We would not have gotten by without the moleskin that she put on the blisters and the nails that she took off of feet. My name is Grace Shemaine. I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner, and healthcare is very important to me. Rural hospitals are in trouble in the United States. Hospitals in states that haven't accepted Medicaid are especially stressed. The federal money provided by the ACA for Medicaid expansion that pays for health care insurance for the working poor is left unused in states that refuse Medicaid expansion. Meanwhile, rural communities are losing their hospitals. In North Carolina, we are out $3.7 billion a year because of not accepting Medicaid expansion. Now imagine $3.7 billion taken out of any industry in North Carolina. I have looked for the excuse for not accepting Medicaid and I can't figure it out. And I've had some pretty smart people trying to convince me both ways. It's absolutely something that has to be done. But that's only one problem. The second problem is big health care conglomerates like Vident Health. Absolutely. Vident Health yes, Vident Health came to Bell Haven and told our community they were going to maintain and strengthen our hospital with a big smile on their face. They are going to increase the amount of services that were provided. When their executives told our community that, they have admitted to me since that they knew they were going to close our hospital. These big conglomerates are coming in some of these small towns and killing these small hospitals in order to drive those patients to their other facilities. With Vident Health, a nonprofit, closed the first Hill Burton Hospital in the United States of America, a critical access hospital, in a year that they made $109 million. And they've now got over $700 million sitting in the bank. And they closed a critical access hospital. They closed emergency room services to 15 to 20,000 people. And they are now trying to undermine everything we do to get our hospital open. Them and their supporters. That's what's wrong in this country. That's why you have laws. You have some people that just think for themselves and will take advantage of others. That's why you have laws to stop that. And this is one of the things that needs to be dealt with. We hope to see some legislation very soon in a way that will be crafted so that it will affect changes in rural health care and rural hospitals so that they can survive. I want to give you another statistic. 283 hospitals. If you just have 10 needless deaths per hospital, that is almost equivalent to a 9-11 attack happening every year, year after year. Now, how some of the national press has not picked up on a store where 283 hospitals are going to close and we're going to have something sim similar to a 9-11 taking place every year if they're let close. I don't understand that. We've been battling that for two weeks. Thank Thankfully, NPR, CBS Radio, MSNBC, they have done some things nationally. But we need more national debate about this issue. So we're asking for that as well. <clears throat> the other thing I want to say is this. Saving rural hospitals is not something our legislators can't do. In 2015, everybody listening, really focus here for a second. In 2015, our country is going to give away $27.2 billion to other countries. Those 283 hospitals, let's round them up to 300. Paul Newsbaum will tell you that a million dollars to a small hospital is a lot of money. If we took $300 million and put them on those 283 hospitals, I'm sure about 100% of them would be saved. So that means that we could give away $26.9 billion to other countries that don't even like us, 
and keep our hospitals open for our veterans, our children, our family, our friends. Isn't that a good idea? Now, what I'd like to do is introduce a friend of mine. Um, you know, they say that Republicans and Democrats can't work together. And I, I can tell you, that's, there's some truth to that. I've seen it. Uh, you, right here where we stand in this city today, if you go to a Republican's office and tell them you've been to a Democrat's office, they're mad with you, and vice versa. We've got a, a culture in this country today where people aren't working together. This is an issue, health care. Health care for Mr. Wahab here, that veteran, that should not be a problem or a debatable issue. That man should be provided emergency care. Amen. Nobody should be able to take emergency care away from his community or him, especially if a hospital can be profitable. That's wrong. So anyway, we have a situation here with this health care issue with Reverend Barber and myself have been able to work together. And I've got to give him credit. A lot of my Republican friends don't like the fact that I, I promote him and I, and I speak up for him so much. And the reason is, when, when we had our hospital closed, I held a rally, about 300 people came. Then I got to the Vidant people, and they told me basically to get lost. They told me they told everybody they were going to close the hospital when they took it over, which was a lie. But, but when nobody would help, the Republicans didn't come, the Democrats didn't come, our legislators didn't come, Reverend Barber came, and he is the reason we're still moving on today. And he is the reason, part of the reason we're standing here today, because I sure wouldn't be in the middle of this mess if he hadn't got. So anyway, I want to introduce Reverend Barber to say some remarks as well. Reverend Barber. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My daughter came here to Congress when we were fighting to get the Affordable Care Act passed. She has a pre-existing condition. She has a brain condition. And I cannot forget what she asked one senator, or a couple of them, when they were kind of waffling about the ins and outs of the bill and whether or not they were going to support a bill that would guarantee that insurance companies could not deny people because of pre-existing condition. And she looked at them in the eye. I think she was um, a teenager then. I know she was. And she said this. The real question is, do you want me to die? I didn't ask that question. A lobbyist didn't ask that question. But a young teenage girl with a pre-existing condition said that's really the issue when it comes to the Affordable Care Act, when it comes to Medicaid expansion, when it comes to saving rural hospitals. The question is not a Democratic question. It's not a Republican question. It's a deeply moral question. That is, do you want people to live or do you want people to die? Well, the purpose of the walk was to bring attention to this national story of 283 hospitals looking at closure. Uh, it's a horrific tragedy that could hit our country, and what we wanted to do was try to get a national dis debate started on the issue. I think we did that. Furthermore, from what I understand, there may even be some legislation that is about to uh, come about in the next couple of weeks that could help rural hospitals uh, be more sustainable. I think the legislation that is being looked at that may pop up in the next few weeks is a direct result of these walkers that walked 283 miles for the 283 hospitals. We had over 20 states that participated on the walk and almost 40 states participated in one way or another. Um, we, the, the winner of the most people was Texas. I think Texas sent seven folks along the way to walk with us. So uh, we had a lot of participation. Well, we want to thank especially Yvonne DeRuiz, my mother, who were the support staff. We want to thank Bob Zellner for all of his help putting this together. There's a lot of people that gave a lot of time to make this happen. It was a pretty big event to get all these states involved. We're going to have legs on this story because there is legislation that is being proposed. We're not supposed to announce it, but it's mainly because of the walk last year and definitely because of the walk this year. They were going to, they're going to make the legislation, and they have asked that it be in memory of Portia Gibbs. We don't know if that's going to be official or not, but you know, this story has legs, and it is national news, even though they don't think so. How many years can some people exist? How many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free? Oh, they're allowed to be free.
many times can a man turn his head? How many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see? The answer, my friend, sing it to us. The answer is glory in the wind. Once again, the answer, my friend. The answer, my friend, is glory in the wind. The answer is glory in the wind. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree. Oh, that's nice. 